If a doctor has said that you or someone you love has a tethered cord, you might well have some questions about what that really is. The medical problem of the tethered cord simply means that some abnormality on the inside of your back is attached to your spinal cord and tugging on it. When an infant or a small child has this condition, it can cause gradually progressive troubles, especially if the child grows taller very quickly. When that happens, the tugging on the spinal cord can worsen and symptoms may appear. What are those symptoms? Well, a helpful way to remember them is to think of four words, each of which begins with the letter D. Discomforts. Tugging on the spinal cord sometimes hurts. Pain may occur either in the back or traveling down the legs. Deformities. Sometimes tugging on the spinal cord causes an abnormal curve to develop in the back, which is called scoliosis. Or, when the spinal cord is tethered, it may cause changes to occur in the shape of the feet, such as high arches, hammer-shaped toes, or inward turning of the feet. Dysfunctions. These may be easy to notice if they're on the outside, such as a new weakness or new numbness. But sometimes a dysfunction can happen on the inside, out of sight, where it can affect the kidney, the bladder, or the bowel. Decline of abilities. Normally, growing children become better and better at doing things such as running, jumping, climbing, and balancing. A worsening tethered cord can cause the child to do these things less and less well as the child gets older. So what causes a tethered spinal cord? Most of the causes of a tethered cord are errors of how the spinal cord was formed in the very beginning while the baby was still in the mother's tummy. There are several different types of errors which can occur, but in general, they can be grouped as either those which cause simple tethered cords or those which cause complex tethered cords. Simple tethered spinal cords. The most common example of a simple tethered cord is when the only thing pulling down on the spinal cord is a single, short, thick, sometimes fatty fiber. The explanation about how that can occur goes like this. In the very beginning, while still in the mother's womb, a baby's spinal cord extends all the way down to the tailbone. But normally, as the baby grows, the lowest end part of the spinal cord gradually shrivels up. By the time the baby is born, the end of the spinal cord is located higher up, closer to the baby's lowest rib. Only the individual nerves plus one thin, loose, leftover strand comes down from that higher up end of the spinal cord. This thin strand is called the phylum terminale. But if that shriveling up process does not happen correctly, the phylum terminale may become malformed into a band which is short, unusually thick, and sometimes has an unusual amount of fatty tissue in it. That abnormal phylum can act like an anchor chain pulling down on the spinal cord, bringing the end of the spinal cord much further down below the last rib. This type of tether cord is simple in the sense that to correct the problem only requires a relatively small operation to find that specific thick short fiber and cut it without disrupting the spinal cord or its nerves. That will release the spinal cord from its tether. Complex tethered cords also occur as an error during development while the infant is in the womb but the malformation does not just tug on the spinal cord, it also deforms it. This occurs in conditions with names such as spina bifida, spinal lipoma, or split cord malformation. These conditions are complex because the surgery to release their tug on the spinal cord requires a much greater degree of precision to free the cord and the nerves without injuring them that calls for meticulous surgical technique using an operative microscope.
which can take up to four to six hours to complete. That is about twice the time it takes to perform release of a simple tethered cord. There are many risks associated with the operations to release tethered spinal cords. There is the danger that such a procedure might cause new dysfunctions like weakness, numbness, bowel and bladder problems, leakage of spinal fluid, or even cause infections that delay recovery. Your pediatric neurosurgeon can explain to you how complex your child's spinal birth defect looks on the MRI scan and describe for you these and other risks involved in its treatment. Your surgeon can also describe many precautions that are taken to help minimize those risks. In most cases, a child who undergoes release of a tethered spinal cord, whether simple or complex, will remain in the hospital flat in bed for several days after the operation while receiving antibiotics to prevent infection and medications to relieve postoperative pain. Whether your child has either a simple or a complex tethered spinal cord, surgery to release the spinal cord from its tether can prevent progressive worsening of those problems which begin with the letter D. Discomforts, deformities, dysfunctions, or declining abilities.